Hi friends, my name is Kenton Whitman and together with my family, we aim to share wilderness skills, mindfulness practices, wild edible plants, family adventures, and skills that break you free from the limits of civilized life. Join us by subscribing to our channel and joining our YouTube family. Hello friends, it is a windy winter Wisconsin day, so I'm hoping that you can hear me over the wind. Today I wanted to share something that might seem super obvious, but as we're gaining nature literacy, there are things that maybe our eyes just pass right over. And there's something significant in the frame of this video that has to do with fire making. Hopefully you've spotted it already, but I just wanted to share some thoughts and ideas about it today. Now, if we're gonna start a fire in the woods, it's a different game than trying to do it out in the field. Out in the field here, we have all kinds of tinder, like, well, like this goldenrod. So if we are trying to start a fire with friction fire or with fire steel, we have ample materials. In the forest, as you look around, it can look a lot more bare. Now, there are definitely things out here to start fires with, Birch bark, of course, is a famous one that we can use with a fire steel. But another thing that is great for starting fires is some species of dry leaves. Now, in the winter, finding those dry leaves can be tough. We can look down and see where squirrels have dug out from the ground and brought up some leaves but those are generally going to be pretty wet. And sometimes if we look carefully, we will find just on a branch somewhere or here wrapped around part of a tree, some leaves that have fallen and just never made it all the way down to the ground. Those have been drying in the sun and the wind and they're great, but difficult to find. You're going to find one here, one there, Sometimes a branch will fall and you'll, you'll have more. But there is something special, I'm sure you've seen it now, that's happening right over my shoulder. And that is that we have a tree that has marcescent leaves. Now what this means, marcescent, is that the tree, after those leaves die in the autumn, these deciduous trees, they don't lose all of their leaves. In fact, sometimes almost none will fall off. This, it's different for different species. So in this woods, we have a uh, hop hornbeam and hornbeam, and they hold on to their leaves all through the winter. You can recognize them just looking through the forest by their little light papery leaves, but oaks and beeches, also famously hold on to their leaves all through the winter. This is, well, this is an oak. And this is my favorite one for fire starting. If you're familiar with beeches, I'm not, we don't have them around here. So we're just at the edge of their range. If you're familiar with beeches, tell me how they are for fire starting. Are they thumbs up or uh? The hornbeam that I talked about and the hop hornbeam earlier, they have leaves that will definitely start up, but they're very papery and thin. So once they're on fire, they don't have a lot of heat to give off. But these oak leaves, wow. Let's take a look. You might have heard how firmly that's on there. Now these oak leaves, they are thick. They're almost, I'm not going to say they're woody, but almost like a thin wood. And because of that, once they start up, they are hot. So they're really good for being a primary tinder source that's gonna feed your, whatever your secondary is. So some of the little branches off of the hornbeam or an iron one. If you train your eyes to see these marcescent leaves, you're gonna see them probably all over your woods if you have the right species. And I'll show you how well these start up. Got myself a little stick here.
my tools here. I've got a fire steel. I have leather pants. These are actually uh, real brain tan, so they're thick deerskin leather, and they're essentially fireproof. So I'm gonna be able to start my fire right here in my lap. Obviously don't do this with anything except for that kind of real material. I've got my leaves and I have my squat, another really important tool. That squat allows me to stay up off the snowy ground and to be working like this without getting cold and wet. I have a little nest and I'm gonna take some of these and I'm gonna crunch them up really good. I want them to be close together. I'm not turning it into a powder, but just close together so that when my heat goes in there, it has somewhere to go. In general, when I start a fire in the winter, the disadvantage is that everything's colder. So it takes more energy to bring things up to that ignition point. But that's more than offset by the dryness usually in winter, which really gives us an advantage. There you go, that burns with a lot of heat. And very nice to use to get your next fire started. The chunk that you squish down will have kind of a coal effect. It'll give you a little more oomph. So another technique there is to have your main nest and then to have your little smushed up chunk in the middle and have another big smushed up chunk. Once you can get that going, you can see the smushed up chunk is a little tougher to get going, but once you do, and then you can set that other coal in there, essentially it becomes a coal extender, a lot like a piece of chaga or a piece of hoof fungus. To make this video more valuable, share what marcescent leaves you have in your part of the world, what species hold on to their leaves, and go out, try them for fire making, and see how do they do. These oak, again, they're my favorite. They're a lot harder to get started, but once you do, they have a lot of go power. They're really powerful. What is beech like if you've used that? And remember that sometimes with these marcescent leaves, they will stay on younger trees. So it's not always completely species specific, but juvenile trees will hold on to them. And as that same tree gets older, it may start letting its, its leaves go in the winter. These white oaks, they love to hold on to them. Other oaks, sometimes, what are your species? So share down in the comments and we can all help each other learn more about nature and bushcraft. All right, love to you all. Talk with you in the comments. <laughs>